I'd always been writing songs and doing music, but just for myself. Working for different artists was great, but the creativity was a little limited. At some point I was like, what am I waiting for? I should just like, you know, find a drummer, because that's what I, the one thing I, I really think makes a band is a drummer-singer uh, relationship or whatever. So that's really the one step I made was like, I just gotta find a drummer and then start playing some shows. And was CC the only drummer you like auditioned with or jammed with? No, I tried about like seven. <laughs> <laughs> and But they all like wanted to sound like a different drummer. I could tell like, oh, this guy wants to be Travis Barker. Or this guy wants to be whatever, I don't know, some other drummer. But CC had this fresh kind of like perspective on music where it's like, all right, I'm not a band. I'm not like have any requirements of what this band has to be. We're just gonna do it and have fun. And I didn't even want to play shows. I was like, I thought we could just like jam in a garage. Like, <laughs> he booked a show within... Soda Bar? Yeah, yeah, at Soda Bar he booked it. So we played there in March and we formed the band around January and he booked it right away and I was like, no, I'm gonna throw up <laughs> on stage and, and he's like, that'll be good. Like, it'll give people it'll something thing, to talk about. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a chick that threw up on stage. Cool. <laughs> like growing up as a band in North Park, what was kind of special about that neighborhood that kind of, do you think, had, did a lot for you guys? It's just so much happening in North Park and there was really kind of a buzz in the... And there was a shift going on right at that yeah. time where it was, you know, there was new places popping up and kind of getting more artsy in North Park and you know, 30th Street was really starting to boom, and when we had met through Craigslist, we both lived right off of 30th Street, just a few blocks away, so we were just always down there. And then, you know, Bar Pink had such a cool vibe, and we shot the video, we shot a video for Give Him Hell at Bar Pink, and it was, it's still my favorite video, live video we've ever done, because it's, it really, I think, captures, like, a cool live show in a tiny little place. They put on free music all the time in Bar Pink. Any shows stand out here in San Diego that you're like, wow, this is our hometown crowd, you know, whether it was that sold out Bar Pink show or Belly Up show, or does anything kind of stand out? I think for me, it was the our record release at the Casbah. We sold out the Casbah that night, and we sold, like it was, I think that was the first time anyone ever asked me for an autograph too, because we had like our CD printed and people could buy it. And I didn't know, I like was so thrown off, like I didn't know what to write or how to like, sign an autograph, but like that we, you know, we want the Casbah is like, you know, that's the, the venue to play as an up and coming band and to be able to sell it out and to, that was after we had done the slow tour and really kind of had a hard time on the road, just trying to get people out to shows and then to come back to San Diego for this record release and all these people there, it was just a good feeling like, we're doing it, we're at the Casbah, like this is such a big deal and, and that's why we continue to go back and play the Casbah. It's got a great vibe. Um, do you guys do many all-age shows? I feel like CC, like a lot of girl, like younger girls would like look up to you and see, because I have, I have a lot of my friends that are, you know, around my age that like look up to you like, man, CeCe's such a badass, you know, just like up there wailing on the drums, but do you have like any moments where like little girls come up to you and like want to like shake your hand or something? Yeah, sometimes, you know, or sometimes it's the parents bringing their daughter being like, we want her to be a drummer, you know, but sometimes it is like a girl or, you know, like at the Carl Strauss show, there was a girl that came up and said, I want to do what you do. And I always just give them a pair of drumsticks and say, go do it, you know? Start hitting things. Start hit, get some books, because <laughs> before we had the band, I had these hardcover books on a table, and there was a band called Grand Old Party. So I put a Grand Old Party on the YouTube and like play along with these books, because the YouTube. The YouTube. Um, you know, but so I, I love being able to do that, to give someone a pair of drumsticks and say, you don't even need the drums, all you need is the sticks, you know, and maybe one day someone will come back and invite me to their show because they got the drumsticks, like that would be awesome, just to inspire someone to go and actually do it. I want to ask, why uh, why is Rocco named Rocco and not Shaquille O'Neal? Because <laughs> last year at Kaboo, you met Shaquille O'Neal. It was our obsession, right? Yeah, like, he touched your belly. Yep, like, he did. And I didn't even ask him to, he just did. And I was like, I was going to ask you, but you just went for it. But, um, <laughs> I don't know if Shaquille really fits Rocco's uh, persona. He's growing pretty fast, though. I don't know. He's, He's going to be taller than both of us. He's going to be a ball player. But yeah, like uh, congratulations on your on your baby boy. And um, how is the life now as a touring rock and roll band with a little little baby little baby boy? We've cut back on the touring a bit with the baby, just doing one-off festivals here and there, not like the weeks on end. You know, obviously the baby comes first, and uh, so we've been doing some writing, some recording. It's good, it's a challenge, like tour is a challenge, you don't get much sleep on tour when you got a baby. It's like, oh man, I sleep, I don't get much sleep. But 
you make do and you do the best you can. Is your uh, rider dif any different now? Like, you know, like diapers and <laughs> Not Well, I see the avocados now. He gets to eat the avocados. Oh, okay. well, that's good. Yeah, you were pretty much pregnant the entire, your whole tour last year, right? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was magical. Like, how many people get to do that? It's hard because I, I don't have very many role models of other women that have been pregnant on tour or that even have babies and continue to be in bands. It usually, as a female musician, kind of pauses or ends their career temporarily. You know, if you can't find a role model, you've got to be one. So I'm hoping to just keep doing it. I mean, what a cool life for our kid to be able to travel and, you know, he's already been to how many states and he's only nine months old and, uh, you know, we plan on taking him to Europe and we plan on including him and, you know, making, it's our family business. Just like any other family business, if you're a kid growing up in the family business, you become part of it. Being a musician or independent contractor and whatever you do, you're always, you're never 100% secure and that's a good thing for, I think, an artist to be like, Whatever I do has to be better than what I did before. And whatever, I want people to remember what we do in a good way and that keeps getting better. And I think I did have a moment once where I was like, I think we're gonna be okay. Like when you read people's comments or people, oh, I heard this music from my friend and it changed my life or something like that. It's like, whoa, I've never felt that strongly about my music or other people's. Maybe I have like growing up, like whoever influenced me, but to be influencing people's lives and whether it's the lyrics or just the vibe of the song, like it's important, for me at least, like that's the goal. I think there's been a couple moments like that where I'm like, oh, wow, I think we'll be okay. We're doing something right where we can keep doing this, but nothing's for sure. Though.